Vi here, and in this video, we're going to go over the elemental attributes in Blue Protocol. But before we get started, I want to address a few things. Due to the lack of team coordination in matchmade content, I had to use training dummies to showcase the different attributes. Open world enemies were another option, but they often died too quickly to demonstrate the stages of attribute state anomalies effectively. I also attempted to show the attributes in solo dungeon runs, but the group of enemies became too challenging to defeat alone, hindering a more isolated showcase. However, rest assured that all the information about elemental effects as in what each element provides is 100% accurate, as it comes directly from the game's tutorial book. Now, let's jump into the basics. Blue Protocol features six elemental attributes, fire, ice, thunder, earth, light, and dark. These attributes can be found on skills and weapons, allowing you to inflict status abnormalities on enemies. By attacking enemies with these attributes, whether through skills or weapons, you accumulate attribute values that can trigger an elemental burst. You can track the progress of the burst through the bar below the enemy's health, which gradually fills up as you deal damage. One key thing to note is that attacking an enemy with an attribute it's weak against will increase your damage output. This is indicated by an arrow icon next to your damage numbers. The icon has three versions, each representing the effectiveness of the damage increase. However, the exact damage multipliers for an enemy's elemental weakness are currently unknown, though from my testing which I cannot stress this enough take it with a grain, of a grain of salt, yes, a grain of a grain. It seems like 20% at least for the first effective arrow, using my dust force debuff to grant a second effective arrow showed no difference in damage so it could just be the dust force 20% debuff doesn't stack. I don't know why, but math sucks moving on. When using both an elemental weapon and an elemental skill together, the skill's attribute takes precedence over the weapon's attribute. Most classes have only a handful of skills that come with a dedicated elemental effect. These skills usually have cooldowns, which means they won't become an issue and might actually assist you. However, spell caster players should keep in mind that the majority of their skills are elemental and cooldowns aren't really a thing, limiting their freedom to use certain attributes. So, what happens when we accumulate elemental attribute values? Well, several things occur over time during a battle. Firstly, the elemental effects become increasingly potent as they accumulate. This is indicated by a three-stage bar, as mentioned earlier, situated below the enemy's health. The third stage represents the elemental burst, and I'm sure most of you already understand this concept from playing the game. However, there are a couple of lesser-known details that I'd like to share, such as the bonuses associated with triggering an elemental burst. Activating an elemental burst triggers a burst bonus damage time that lasts for 10 seconds. During this time, both players and Battle Imagine will deal increased damage to the enemy affected by the burst so it is ideal to deal as much damage as possible to the enemy affected by the burst. Naturally you'll know when it's an elemental burst when the burst finish gauge with a level 1 indicator appears. Attacking with elemental attributes will fill this gauge up too. Aim to reach all 5 levels of the gauge for maximum effectiveness. After the burst bonus damage time ends, a burst finish will occur at the end, dealing massive damage to enemies based on the level reached on the burst finish gauge. Some elemental attributes may also apply buffs or debuffs around the affected target after the burst finish, but we'll explore those in the next segment. Remember only one elemental effect can be active at a time on a target. Now, let's delve into each attribute state anomaly, but as always if you find these videos helpful or entertaining please do leave a like on the video, comment and subscribe as it will help me out a ton, anyways. Fire Attribute Status Abnormality, in level 1 and level 2, the target is engulfed in flames and gradually loses HP basically applying a damage over time effect. When it becomes a fire burst, a small explosion occurs at the time of the burst occurrence, and a larger explosion occurs when the burst ends. Earth Attribute Status Abnormality, in level 1 and level 2, the body is covered in earth, and the damage received increases. When it becomes an earth burst, it's completely covered in earth and unable to move at the time of the burst occurrence. 
At the end of the burst the earth explodes, causing significant damage. Thunder attributes status abnormality, in level 1 and level 2, the body is electrified, and there is a chance of being inhibited. When it becomes a thunder burst, a small explosion occurs at the time of the burst occurrence, and a large explosion occurs when the burst end, dealing significant damage and causing paralysis to the target. Ice attributes status abnormality, in level 1 and level 2, the target is frozen, and its movement speed decreases. When it becomes an ice burst, it's completely covered in ice and unable to move at the time of the burst occurrence. At the end of the burst the ice shatters, causing significant damage once again. Light attributes status abnormality, in level 1 and level 2, the target is enveloped in light, and the damage received from the affected target decreases. When it becomes a light burst, a small explosion occurs at the time of the burst occurrence, and a large explosion occurs at the end of the burst, dealing significant damage and giving surrounding players HP recovery buff. Dark attributes status abnormality, in level 1 and level 2, the target is shrouded in darkness, and there is a chance of missing attacks. When it becomes a dark burst, a small explosion occurs at the time of the burst occurrence, and a large explosion occurs at the end of the burst, dealing significant damage and giving a HP leak state. HP leak is similar to life leech though not as strong. So with all this information, what is the best element to use? Well Earth is really great for dealing damage to everything due to its level debuffs. Light not only decreases the damage you receive from the enemy but also can help you survive due to its HP Regen buff at the end. Dark is also similar to light though the blind status that causes targets to miss probably isn't the best, but again the HP leakage is really good. Personally, I'd say Earth is best for teams that have healers, Light would be best along with Dark for teams without good healers, but realistically none of it currently matters simply due to the lack of elemental weapons at higher levels, but at least now you know. Once again thank you for watching if you enjoy this content or find it helpful, leave a like on the video, comment and subscribe as it all helps me get my videos out there. Sorry for the voice change.